What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel once again. So today we're going to just show you a very simple anodizing technique that I use. So let's just jump right in. Let's get started. So first you're just going to need some distilled water. Might want to pick up one or two of these. Some battery acid that I got right over here that I already filled up with this jar right here. And this is just some plain distilled water just to rinse off the part. And I'll be doing this piece that you saw on my other channel in my latest one. So we're going to anodize this blue today. So I went ahead already and cleaned this up and I used uh, just simple green, wiped it all down, splashed it all off just to make sure it was clean. And this is just a piece of aluminum wire I can use to hook it up. And that's just going to sit right into the acid. And now all I need to do is hook up the negative. And this is just another piece of aluminum. And I'll hook this up to the positive. So I'll go ahead and turn this on and I'll put it at two amps and we'll let this run for an hour. And if everything is working correctly, you should be able to see bubbles coming up. Just like that, you can see the bubbles. Now I am doing this in my garage. I would suggest doing this in a well-ventilated area so you're not breathing in any of these toxic gas that's coming out. So the dye I am using is this RIT dye. It's just a clothing dye, cotton wool, nylon, whatever. And it's just RIT brand and you can get this pretty much anywhere. It's, I don't know, two bucks or something like that. So that's what I'll be doing. And I already have this already heating up to about 135, 140 degrees on this stove so after an hour this is ready we'll be ready to just dump this in and get the ink to sit on to that piece so over here you can see that i got the ink boiling over here and once this gets up to about 140 degrees i'm just going to go ahead and turn this off and i'm just using a simple thermometer just to test to see where it's at because i know obviously that's boiling so that's hotter than this is so we'll just monitor it periodically and see so here we are, let's check the temperature of this. As you can see, that's right around 143 degrees. So I'll just go ahead and put this on a really low heat just to kind of maintain it at that. All right, so this has been going for about 50 minutes or so, so that should be good enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this, get this hooked up. We'll get this rinsed off into the distilled water and then we'll submerge it into the dye. And I'll just spray some distilled water onto it just to try and rinse off some, some of the acid at first. And we'll swash it around inside the distilled water. Make sure that any acid remaining is gone. That should be all right. And then we'll put it into the dye. And we'll let this sit for about 10 minutes. Usually you can tell if this is working because after about even just a few seconds, you should see that it's picking up the dye already. So I'll leave this in here for about, for about 10 minutes or so before I put it into the boiling water. All right, so right here I got the water boiling and this has been in here for about 12 to 15 minutes or so, as you can see. So I'm just gonna submerge this now into the boiling water just to seal up all the ink. And we'll leave that to sit in there for about uh, five, 10 minutes or so. All right, so here is the final piece. As you can tell, the bottom didn't really get fully anodized and there may be, and the top also didn't. That could be for numerous reasons. It could have happened because it sat so low in the tank and the cathode was actually up higher so it didn't get fully anodized. Same with the top, might have been sticking out just a little bit because my buckets weren't quite big enough, but there you go, there's a result that I got. Now adjusting some of the settings might make it a little bit better. 
And I did do this in my garage. So it is about 120 degrees in there. So you want the temperature of the acid to be around 65 to 70 degrees. So I did have to cool this off with some ice, but I don't think I fully cooled it off enough to get it to anodize perfectly, but that's okay. It also could have been affected because of the surface finish on it, along with maybe I didn't clean it good enough. So there's numerous reasons why that could have happened. Now I went ahead and did a few other ones. And as you'll see, Let's take a look at this one, which I think looks really cool. It looks like a marbled speckled kind of, but also this probably happened because it wasn't fully cleaned. The temperature did rise significantly on the second batch. So this is probably going at around 78 to 80 degrees, and that's not ideal. And you'll probably end up with something like that. But if you like that, which I actually really do, then hey, maybe you might want to do that and just raise the temperature a little bit. And I did one other one. And this one is slightly better, but it's lighter. So this side, because it was probably up against the wall, probably didn't get anodized as well either as much as this side did. So you really want to have your part more or less right in the middle of the bucket. And probably if I used some air assist or something bubbles to just kind of create it, just to agitate it a little bit more. So when it's uh, acid etching, it doesn't just get on one side, it kind of gets the whole thing. So yeah, my dye might've gotten a little weaker. So, which is also why it's not as dark, but let me know which one you think you like the best. And let me know in a comment down below. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give a recap of the whole process all together and I will show you exactly what you will need. All right, so this is everything you will be needing and I just picked up these three pitchers at local grocery store and they were like $1.25 a piece and I picked up three of them, one that I'm just using for the dye, one I'm using for the acid along with the distilled water which I used about three parts distilled water to one part uh, battery acid, which I got right here. And I picked up at AutoZone for about 14 bucks for six gallons of it. So that's plenty for what I need it for. And then just some distilled water to rinse it off. And you might want to pick up a few bottles of it just to make sure you have enough. Now you're also going to need a thermometer or something to make sure that the temperature is controlled. You're going to need something to hang it on along with some wire just to support it so it doesn't just fall in there and you're never getting it back out again. Also, you will need some piece of just scrap aluminum. And as you can see, this didn't go all the way down to the bottom. And I probably should have picked a piece that actually went to the bottom, but I didn't. But it worked for the most part. And for the dye, I just picked up some Rit Royal Blue that I picked up at, I think I bought this one at on off of Amazon for just a few bucks. So it's not very expensive. And you'll also need some kind of battery charger or some kind of power source. And I only have the option for two amps and six amps. So I just set mine at two amps and let it run for about 45 minutes. And depending on the piece that you're doing, if it's bigger, if it's smaller, you'll probably have to adjust that a little bit. But since that's all I had, that's all I had. So I had to work with what I got. And you'll also want some gloves just to make sure you're not getting any of this acid on your hands. And once you're done rinsing off the piece before you stick it into the acid, you will want to rinse this down and wear gloves to make sure you don't get any oil from your fingers or dirt or anything like that onto the piece. So in total for this entire setup, I probably only paid about $25, $30 total. The battery charger I did already have, so take that into consideration. If you need to pick one up, you can probably pick one up for about 45, 50 bucks, depending on where you get it from. So that's about it. That's all you're gonna need. Very simple. I suggest doing this outside in a well-ventilated area. And if you're anywhere like I live, I live in Las Vegas and we have a ridiculous heat wave going on right now and it's been 115 degrees outside. So that probably heated up my garage to more like 120, 130. So you might want to get just a bucket with ice to put underneath the acid just to keep it cool. Well, that's it for today, guys. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. Ring the bell. Get notified of all the new videos that come out. And as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.